Most architects and designers are juggling way too many tools, switching between 10 different apps or software just to get one project out the door. But here's the truth. You don't need dozens of software to create cinematic visuals. You just need the right essentials. In this video, I'm breaking down the three core tools I use for every project, from gathering references all the way to the final cinematic animation. By the end of this video, you'll know the exact toolkit I use to storyboard, model, and render cinematic visuals. These are the tools that keep my workflow efficient, my visuals sharp, and getting my clients' approval faster. And here's the twist. At the end, I'll reveal two bonus tools I use for very specific tasks. Stick around, because they could save you hours and completely change the way you approach your next project. Every cinematic project starts with a clear vision. For me, Miro works like a massive digital storyboard, where I pin references, sketch out sequences, and map my ideas visually. Here's why it matters. Instead of wasting hours second-guessing, I get a crystal clear direction before I even open my rendering software. Most of my references, straight from Pinterest, I drop them right into Miro, group them into categories, and add quick notes so nothing gets lost. It's like having my entire creative brain mapped out on one screen. And the best part? The free plan gives you up to three boards, which honestly is more than enough to run multiple projects without feeling limited. Now I'm not going to walk through every feature here, but if you'd like a dedicated breakdown of how I use Miro for my cinematic workflows, drop me a comment and I'll make that tutorial happen. Once the story is locked in, I jump straight into SketchUp. It's quick, intuitive, and built for architects who want speed without sacrificing precision. This is where I lay the foundation. The geometry, the proportions, the perspective tests. Think of it as building the bones of your scene, the structure that sets the stage for everything else. Sure, there are plenty of other tools like Max, Rhino, Revit, and Blender, you name it. But when I need something fast and simple that just works, SketchUp is always a no-brainer. At the end of the day, it's all about personal preference. For me, SketchUp just gets the job done faster. This is where the magic really happens. The moment I bring my model into D5 Render, it shifts from a static design into a cinematic scene in real time. The actual breakthrough? Live sync for SketchUp. No exporting, no reloading. I make a change in SketchUp and watch it instantly update inside D5. And here's why it matters. It's very rare that a design is final on the first pass. Clients change details. Proportions need tweaking, perspectives shift. With Live Sync, I don't waste time bouncing between programs, I stay in one continuous flow. It means I can test multiple ideas, explore options, and instantly see how those changes impact lighting, materials, and atmosphere inside D5. It's iteration without interruption. If a client asks for a last minute revision, I can adjust the model on the spot, take a screenshot, and immediately present a polished visualization. This means less delays. That kind of responsiveness builds trust, and trust is what wins projects. That one feature alone has saved me hours and kept me locked in. D5 isn't just another renderer, it's my go-to whenever I need fast and high quality visuals without the heavy setup. And the best part? It's constantly evolving. Every update adds new features that keep it powerful competitive, and budget-friendly. On top of everything else, you can actually do most of your post-processing directly inside D5 Render. One of my favorite parts of D5 is its advanced AI tools. First is the AI Enhancer. All you have to do is select the area you want enhanced and let the engine take over. Give it a moment to load and it automatically adds detail exactly where it's needed. Next is the AI in Painting. This has to be one of the best AI tools for transforming character assets, instantly converting them into realistic, lifelike models. And last but not the least is the AI Style Transfer, perfect for transforming your scene by season or theme. These features take over the tedious technical grind that used to slow everything down. That means I can stay focused on what really matters, the mood, the story, and the atmosphere that make a scene feel cinematic. And if you want a deeper dive into these AI features, I broke them all down in my last video, so be sure to check that out after this one. For color grading, just head to the Effects tab and scroll down. You'll find controls for shadows, 
mid-tones, highlights, or global adjustments. You can tweak exposure, white balance, tint, saturation, until you lock in the look you're after. Even ambient occlusion is there, perfect for adding subtle detail to corner edges. And if you want to generate phasing animations, D5's got built-in templates ready to go. Assign your objects to layers, adjust a few parameters, and you're set. The interface is simple, intuitive, and beginner-friendly. Again, all of this is built right into D5. No need to jump between multiple apps. As promised, here are the two bonus tools I use in very specific situations, especially if your laptop or workstation can't handle everything inside D5 render. The first one is Lightroom. Here's the key difference. A good render shows the design. A great render shows the emotion. Lightroom is my go-to for still images, dialing in cinematic tones, curves, and contrast. But where it really shines is with batch exports. I can apply presets across an entire sequence of frames in one click, keeping the mood consistent and the process lightning fast. And that consistency is exactly what sets me up for the next step, which I'll show you in a moment. The second tool is After Effects. This is where still frames turn into motion. After exporting all my edited images from Lightroom, I pull them into After Effects. Perfect if your laptop or workstation can't handle heavy, real-time animation inside D5 Render. Instead of rendering one massive file, I export frame by frame and stitch them together here. From there, I refine pacing and polish transitions. If D5 builds the visuals, after Effects enhances the rhythm. So here's the complete toolkit. Miro for clarity, SketchUp for structure, D5 for cinematic visuals, Lightroom for mood, and After Effects for storytelling. With tools like these, each workflow is efficient, flexible, and cinematic. If you're new to D5, I highly recommend you to check out the links in the description. I've added a free trial link below so you can try it out for yourself. If you want to learn how I create cinematic scenes, go ahead and watch this next video. It goes deeper into the techniques that I use from camera angles to cinematic compositions. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.